Buddy Tech right here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some basic lighting in Blender. So as you can see here, I am in Blender Render, and um, I know a lot of you will probably use Cycles Render, which is why this is going to be a two-part tutorial. I'm going to put this timestamps right here, and um, so yeah, guys, I'm just going to get right into this. So starting off in Blender Render, uh, the ba the most basic thing that I always do is if I take this and press Shift Z you'll see everything is black and that's because there's no light in the scene cycles render does not work this way there's always some light in the scene well most of the time you can make it lightless but the default settings are there is always light in the scene um, so another thing you'll notice is if you watch my uh, tutorial about importing Fortnite models to blender you'll see it's a lot smaller than when you import it when you import it he is this big and there's a problem because He's about the size of a skyscraper right now, so he's going to light like you would light a skyscraper, not like you would a human. So I always scale him to 0.1. And, uh, yeah guys, so if your head and hat and stuff doesn't move with it, just scale it all to 0.1. But, um, anyways guys, let's just get right into the lighting. So I'm going to press 3 to go into side view on my number pad. I'm going to press shift A and add a sun lamp to start out with. This is, uh, very basic. I just rotate it at him, G to move it, R to rotate, and then I'm actually going to go to my front view by pressing 1, rotate it at him again so that we can get some more uh, angles that look uh, better than just straight on because that doesn't really look good. And so now you'll see we have this, but the problem is we have these really dark shadows over here, so what we can do to lighten that up is just go over here to the world tab and click ambient occlusion just keep all the default settings you don't need to worry about that and now you can see that we have lighting in the scene and it looks very good but these shadows are softened say if you want a darker scene you can always go into these ambient occlusion settings and make it a factor of 0.1 and now you can see the shadows are still softened but it is a lot darker but usually what I use is just a simple factor of one that it starts out with so if you don't like this uh, like, if, if you look here at the render, the normal maps are very prominent. Like here, in his muscles, there's a little crease right here, but it's not actually there on the mesh. That's a normal map interacting with the light. So another thing you can do is add a point lamp. And just put it wherever you want to. And how, the difference is sun lamp, like shines light in the direction that you angle it. Point lamp shines light in all directions. So as you can see, it is darker scene. It is a darker scene, but uh, we have a less prominent normal map. Now obviously, if you like the look of the sun, you can always just go into the textures under your normal map and just decrease the intensity. But I thought I would just point that out for you guys. Anyways, if you don't like how dark it is, but you do like the look of a point lamp, I need to go, do is go over here to the lamp settings and turn up the energy to a value you do like, maybe five. Let's try that. Yes, as you can see, it's a lot lighter, and it's a lot more, it's a lot less intense on like how strong it is. So the sun lamp kind of got the angle of it, but the light was all over the place. This one, this one is a lot more kind of soft. So if I wanted it even higher put this to 20 and now you can see I have a very bright scene but I it, nobody would want that I, I don't think unless you do in which case be my guest but um anyways guys the if you add any other lamp you'll notice uh, spot hemi and area spot is exactly how you would think of a spotlight it uh, has this and you can scale it and yeah so this is where it's gonna shine and uh, if I put it over here it's not going to shine there, so uh, you can really see it there because I have to turn the energy up. <sighs> yeah, but as you can see on the top of his head, very shiny, obviously. On the bottom, it's not. Uh, if you can't see that really well, I'm going to turn this up to a crazy value that you would never want to do. And just yeah, now you can see this. But if I put it just anywhere outside of him, you're going to see none of that. So. I don't really use the spot lamp. I don't think it looks very good for like making thumbnails and stuff. But you could if you want to. Hemi, it's a lot like the sun lamp. 
uh, unless you really know a lot about Blender, you're not going to really want to mess around with the Hemi lamp. Uh, anyways, the only other one that we have here is the area lamp. And it's also kind of like the sun. It's like the point lamp, but with the sun's directional. It only goes one direction, sort of. It kind of scatters to the sides a little bit, but its main focus is in the one direction, but it is a softer light, and as you can see, that's way too much energy. So I'm just gonna put it down to like 0.1. And now you can see that we do have a soft normal map here, but it's very objective kind of light. So anyways, guys, that's it. that concludes our portion on the Blender render side of things. And uh, now onto the Cycles render. Hello everybody, so I'm back with the cycles portion of this tutorial, and um, so cycles is a lot different from Blender and Turtle. If I press Shift Z and I have no lights in my scene right now, uh, you're just gonna see not everything's not completely black, but everything's dull and gray. Um, so, anyways, so what I told you to do in the last video, which I'm gonna say again in this video, is you want to scale your models down to a human size. So. What Blender is seeing now is a skyscraper in the shape of a human. This is a massive model, so I usually sc scale them to point 0.1. So just press S.1 for all your parts of your mesh, and then you'll have something around this size. And this is so much better. So anyways, I'm just going to get right into the lighting portion of things. I'm going to press 3 and 5 on my number pad to go into side orthographic view. And I'm going to press Shift A and add a um, point lamp just to start out with. And what a point lamp is, is it emits light in all directions, and it's very soft light, uh, unlike the sun lamp, which I will show you guys later. So, what I'm just going to do is press Shift Z, and you'll see it's barely making an impact. So, you just want to increase the uh, strength of it, and it will add a lot more light to your scene. So, that's a... Uh, really bright strength but it's a good example so you'll see right here that it's not hitting some of the major parts of this and that looks really weird so you, over here in the size you just want to increase it I'm gonna maybe try 10 yeah so 10 works now as you can see it's lighting everything but it's still kind of from the angle I put it at and so say you, you got the whole character because if you increase the size too much it's actually gonna go past him so you, you don't want that to happen but if I wanted to get his legs lighted all I would have to do is go over here to the scene view press ambient occlusion for you to be a factor of one but as you can see this kind of ruins the whole feel because nothing's really shaded that well everything's light but not shaded so I would put it to like a factor of maybe 0.5 and then as you can see everything's shaded by the point lamp but everything's also uh, uh, light lighted up, <laughs> and uh, so the next light I'm going to be focusing on is the sun lamp. And I, I turned ambient occlusion off for this, and this kind of hits the scene with a flood of light. Everywhere has light, but directionally, like the sun. So if I just put it right there and I angle it, this line is showing where the sun is coming from, and. Um, if I press Shift Z to render it, uh, it's not very bright, so if I go over here, I'm just going to make a value of like 10. And as you can see, it's a lot brighter, and it's hitting everywhere with the light, just from an angle. Well, maybe not everywhere, maybe where it sees shadows, it's not. But again, on this one, you can increase the size. So it starts out as 0.1, I'm going to try 0.5. Yeah, so now you can see it's hitting everything a lot more evenly, and you shouldn't need AMP and occlusion if you're using a sun lamp. And um, so yeah, there's two more lamps I'm going to talk about and then a really special way of lighting things that I like to use. So the Hemi, it's, it's, a, it's a lot like the sun. If you don't know how this works and you're not like a blender expert, then you, you don't really need to worry about this. Just use the sun lamp and you know, again. Ooh. Yep, just, just works like a sun lamp pretty much. And, uh, you guys, anyway, the next one is, I forgot the spot, I guess it was five, 
and uh, I'm just, so the spot, you know, I think you guys probably know how a spotlight works, is it only lights up uh, one place, right, and um, so, yeah, so if I turn this to just, I'm going to turn this to a crazy number, crazy high, you wouldn't want to use this, just an example, and as you can see, it's very bright on his head, and uh, if I just move it anywhere outside of him, none of that light's going to get to him, so I don't really use this one, but you can if you want. The next lamp, or, or the last lamp, is the Hemi lamp. It's kind of a mix of a sun and a point. So, that didn't really make sense. What it, what it is, is it uses the sun's direction, kind of. So how a point lamp works, it works is it outputs light in every direction. This one mainly outputs it along this line. It'll obviously go off to the side a little bit. But, um, and it uses the softness of a point light, so it doesn't flood the scene with light, but it's like a directional point light. So, the main ones I would use are point and sun, mostly sun, because with point you gotta worry about ambient occlusion. But this brings me to the last, um, lighting. This isn't actually a light, this is a plane. You may be thinking, like, what? And how this works is you use a plane to light your scene. So, if you ever, like, download a blend file, like, from BlendSwap or something, you'll see that these lights are used a ton. And that's because they're easy to move around and see, and they, they work really well. So I'm just going to add a new material to make it emission. And then I'm just going to add a value of, like, uh, d d 50 to the light. So this way it's going to shine on him and the be best thing about these is they're, is they're really easy to visualize and you can make like a whole plane or a whole space of something light up and yeah so now you can see that we just have something it looks really cool the only problem is these are in your way so you're going to want to get them out of your camera view and there's a lot of variation of this that you can do. Like a crazy one I once did was like was like this. I took a cylinder and what I did was I cut this back end or this back face off and I took this back, oh, I'm gonna go back into vertice mode, I took this back thing and I, or this back uh, panel and I scaled it up, oh, whoops, I need to do that, I was accidentally scaling the whole thing, there we go, so I just took this back layer and I scaled it up, so I had something like this, and that light lit, it lit, lighted him up, I don't know how to words, but anyway, so that that lighted him up from all the angles of the front, and it was a front view, so you can see the back. Oh, I forgot to add the material. Wrong one. Ah, there it is. So, oh, that's way too light. So I'm gonna change this to a smaller value. Ah, okay. There we go. Oh. Now, um, we can see that it's very not shaded very well on the front, but it was the look I was going for, so that's just a, a cool lighting thing that I once did. So anyways, guys, that wraps up this tutorial. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.